In today's video, I'm going to be surprising my friends by upcycling their things. It's a wild card. You could do whatever with it. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, I'm back and I'm enjoying the um, artist journey once again. It's a process, you know? Ah! Oh my god! What the heck? <laughs> Today's sponsor, Turo, made it possible to pick up the furniture in today's video. Okay, so yesterday I messaged the team and I asked them, hey guys, you know what, let me just redo the text message. Hey guys, I wanna do a furniture flip for my friends video and was wondering if any of you have a furniture or decor item that isn't serving you, either functionally or aesthetically or both. The idea is that I can upcycle it into something new for you and I want it to be a surprise in the end, but of course wanna hear any thoughts that you have for the item. If you're not familiar, here at The Story Girls, we love to encourage the reuse of items, especially when it means keeping things out of landfills. So I'm going to essentially upcycle my friend's furniture and give it a brand new life. And that's really exciting to me. Now, I've already got some responses, and while I promise I considered all of them, I'm really intrigued by Becky's lamp. So this is like beautiful fluted glass with a wood base, as well as Justin's dresser. It just has such a blank slate. I think it's just a great starting piece to upcycle. So I'm gonna start with Becky's lamp and as much as I'm definitely going to be considering their personal styles and all this, I do want it to be a surprise. So these people are trusting me with their items to turn it out and I don't wanna let them down. So I'm going to pull up my laptop and we can get Becky on the phone so she can tell us more about her item and then we can start the design process. Let's give her a call. Hey Becky. Hello. How's it going? Good, good. So I heard you you want a lamp of mine. Yes, I really was feeling inspired by that photo you sent me. Can you tell me a little bit about the item? So I found that in the thrift store the other day and I didn't need a lamp per se, but it, it had too much potential to be something cool with like the fluted glass. So I thought, I'll pick it up and I'll probably do something with it one day, but then, you know, the one day projects end up sitting in a room for months and story of my life, I think. My taste is very mid-century modern meets like 70s retro. Um, I really like things that are like natural in materials as well, but also like a fun mix of some retro colors like mustards and greens and oranges are really fun. Um, I do like a lot of wood tones, but the wood base on that lamp is confusing me. I think it's a little weird. Okay. So I'm open to keeping it. I don't even know if it comes off or not keep it. I would love it to go up in your home somewhere. So that is my goal. And I think that's all I need from you right now. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm so excited to see what you do with it. Bye. Bye. Okay, so I actually already have the lamp here, literally right here. And Becky wasn't sure about the base of it, but because she loves mid-century modern, she loves warm wood tones, I actually think I want to try and leave it and almost lean into it. And now I'm also feeling really inspired by these like beautiful lines in the fluted glass. Hmm. So like what if we made a lampshade out of wood and lines, which makes me think of these Scandinavian pendant lights that I've seen. But what if we made something like this instead of it being a pendant light, it would be the lampshade. I think Becky would really like something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna need some wood. Let's go to the store. Should I get it? Of course you should get it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I just picked up this quarter inch piece of plywood at Home Depot. This is what we're gonna use to create all the, I guess, panels or slats of the lampshade. And it just has this really beautiful grain. And actually, Rochelle just enlightened me at the store and she told me that when wood grain has this kind of 3D sort of wavy effect to it, it's called the chatoyance or the chatoyancy. Sorry, there's a truck outside. I just really love saying that word, chatoyance, chatoyancy. It kind of just has this like glimmer to it. 
I'm gonna be using the circular saw to cut this piece of plywood into our panels and you may have saw at Home Depot that I picked up another little special saw, but we'll get to that in a little bit. For now, I wanna cut this into four inch by 12 inch pieces. And if this is two feet by four feet, then I should get 24 pieces in total. I don't know if I'm gonna need all of those pieces. It's gonna kinda of be an aesthetic choice at the end. Okay, we have all of our panels cut out and they are looking so nice. Let me grab one. Now, I could definitely just leave them like this and that is fine, but I wanna give them a bit more character. So, now I have this piece cut off of an old cutting board that I recently used in a That Cost How Much Christmas episode. If you saw it, you might remember it, but I really love the curve of this side. So I wanna use this to create a guide and we're gonna make this piece into a template for all the rest of the pieces that we have to do. Cut, make, create, shape, form. I'm, I'm working on my communication skills, guys. So I have my shape all traced out and now I'm ready to bring out our new toy. I mean, tool. Now you could definitely use a jigsaw for what we're doing, but the scroll saw is amazing because it has a really thin oscillating blade in it that's really great at getting any sort of curved corners or really intricate details. If I needed to cut out one of these, I definitely would have used my jigsaw, but because we were cutting out so many of the same thing, I really want to use something like the scroll saw to get the cuts as finite as possible. I actually haven't used one before, so we're in this together. Shall we begin? All right, guys. <laughs> it's really not an intricate cut at all. All right, moment of truth is this curved corner. And then we go in, and then we go okay. I mean, not bad. The shape's right, definitely a bit wonky. Luckily we have sanders though, so that will hopefully bring all these pieces to a consistency. Another really cool thing about the scroll saw is that you can actually stack cut, which means I just grouped together three pieces and I taped along the sides so that we can cut out multiple pieces at a time. I really hope Becky likes this lamp. <laughs> Sad, <laughs> cries in lamp. How many lamps have I made this year, guys? I'm starting a business. If you guys have any tips and tricks to using these machines, please leave it down in the comments down below because I'm super curious. Now that I can do three at once, we're gonna fly through these. Now that we have all of our bunches done, so long as all the backs are flat, I'm going to clamp this all together so we can give this outside part a sand. This way we can make sure they're all symmetrical as even as possible. I have an 80 grit sandpaper to start. I'll probably move on up to a 220 eventually. So I spent a good amount of time sanding and these are looking much better, nice and smooth. Now it's time to actually move on to getting these into an actual lampshade setup. And you guys are probably wondering how I'm gonna go about this, but I went ahead and made two rings. I made these with some scrap quarter inch plywood with a, also a birch veneer that we had in the back. So it is the same wood as these. In a recent video, I show you how to cut wood into a perfect circle like this. These are both eight inch rings. The difference is this one has a six inch diameter circle cut out of the center of it and this one has a four inch diameter circle cut out of the center of it and I made another circle to make this circle I took a four inch hole saw and with our scrap birch plywood I propped that up on another scrap piece and then slowly sawed that out before we move on I want to finish the top portion of the lampshade structure base and this circle is going to sit inside of this circle and then it will fit oh you can't see that it's gonna fit on there and then this will be out here. 
And so now I'm going to need to create some support arms so that these can sit on the same plane. Let's go see what we have in the back. These popsicle sticks look like they should do the trick. I'm just gonna set these up in a little X formation and then take my wood glue and adhere this all together. Okay, moving back to our panels. I've left these in their little tape bunches for a reason. Now I need to cut two quarter inch notches into each grouping so that in the end, we can slide them on to our rings. I am marking my notches two inches down from the ends and 0.5 inches deep from the back side. I'm going to run these through the scroll saw, hollowing out the space by making a bunch of parallel cuts and repeat that for all the stacks. Okay, so things that I've learned with the scroll saw today. Definitely slow and steady wins the race, but we are just so close to the end of this lampshade. I'm just really hoping that the vision turns out. All that's really left is sliding these onto the rings and we can start working on the assembly. So let's do that. Um, I just need to take a step back for a sec. Okay, honestly guys, I just need to let you know that sometimes I am riddled with so much self-doubt, but internally right now, I'm feeling that moment, if you watched the lamp, the flower pot lamp video, when I was like, and it's gonna be like, ooh, and everyone's like, ah, and it's like, yes. I'm gonna take this all apart and go in with some stain. Good morning. It is a new day and today I'm gonna to be working on Justin's dresser. So I'm gonna pull up him on a little video call and we can hear more about his personal style. Hey Justin. Hello, how's it how's going? It? Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> not, not us being polite Canadians. Can you tell me a little bit about your dresser that you've submitted? So I got this dresser from my aunt and I think it's been with us for like six, seven year-ish, then yeah, you reached out and said that you liked it. And I was like, you know what? Upcycle it, give it a facelift. Totally, I'm so happy I can help you bring a new life to this dresser. Could you tell me a bit more about maybe like the styles you have going on in your home right now or styles that you enjoy? Like right now, my living room is kind of a mishmatch of stuff. So there, I wouldn't say there's a particular style to it, but we do enjoy mid-century modern. Okay, mid-century modern. So my last question would be, do you have any color schemes or colors that you enjoy just to kind of maybe guide me a little bit? We do have pops of like light green, olive green. So I think that'd be an interesting thing to bring more into. Okay, amazing. I could definitely make that work. Well, I can't wait to reveal your dresser to you and I'll see you soon. I am so excited for what you do. Ah. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye. Hmm. Okay, so not much style going on in his home currently, which does leave me to have a bit more freedom, I guess. But he did say he loves mid-century moderns and does have some olive and green tones going on. So that's a great start. I don't know why I'm feeling really inclined to make my own handles somehow, like big chunky handles out of wood. But I just clicked this link to a dresser from West Elm. Um, $1,500 though? Because how much? Not this DIY. I love this design. I'm gonna let this act as inspiration for our dresser. And with that being said, let's go DIY. Okay, so I just picked up Justin's dresser. It's underneath this blanket right here. And you guys may have noticed that I'm not actually in my own car right now. Unfortunately, not unfortunately, <laughs> I love my car, but I drive a Beetle and it is a bit too small for picking up large items like Justin's dresser. So I had to rent a bigger one. And I actually used my favorite car rental services app, who is also the sponsor of today's video, Turo. Turo is a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing marketplace where you can find the perfect car for your needs from a real person, or you can actually list your own car for extra cash. 
I love this service because unlike traditional car companies, I know exactly what car I'm getting and the host gives me a personalized experience. Plus there are options to get the car delivered right to my custom location or a popular point of interest like an airport, train station, or hotel. And let's be honest, that totally beats waiting in line to pick up a car. Another thing the app is great for is actually testing specific models that you're thinking about purchasing. Like I love my Beetle, but I am thoroughly enjoying driving this Acura around. What I love most about the app is actually how user-friendly it is. It makes renting a car so easy. All you have to do is pick the amount of time that you want the car for, then you get to choose from all the different options in your area, and you book. It's actually that simple. And there's over a thousand different makes and models all across the country. Another bonus I didn't mention is that while this car totally helped me move the dresser, I'm actually gonna be saving it to do a fun winter activity tonight with my friends. We're actually expecting a lot of snow this afternoon, so now it's great because we could all fit in one car with all our snow staff. And I'll let you guys guess what activity we're planning. Check out the link in our description to book your dream vehicle through Turo. Okay, so we have nine drawers. Hold on. We have six drawers because these are fake. Oh my God, okay. Since I'm planning to make my own drawer pulls, the first thing I wanna do is take off the original knobs and go in with some wood filler. And I also wanna go in with some wood filler on this detail line at the bottom because I think it's going to modernize the look in the end if I fill that in. Okay, moving on to the handles. I just took some time and measured how wide I want them to be. The idea is that I'm going to make the two separate handles first, and then I'm going to divide them into their grid. That's gonna sit like over this area and this area. And I'm hoping once they're divided into their grid and placed onto here, it's gonna actually help with these fake drawers to look more like real drawers as well. Earlier this morning, I went to Home Depot and I picked up this piece of knotty pine. And this is what I'm going to use to make the handles. I wanna make two that are 41 inches long. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, handles are looking good so far. Now I just wanna round out the corners of each drawer pull and I'm going to be using this tape roll to help me trace. And I'm just cutting out these corners with my jigsaw. Now I'm just switching to a 120 grit sandpaper and sanding over all the surfaces and softening out the edges of each handle. Okay, our handles are looking so nice. I love the shape of them. Now I'm ready to divide them into their, I wanna say quadrants, but that wouldn't make sense because wouldn't that mean four, but the grid. The most important measurement is that I get the center exactly center and then this middle drawer, I'm gonna need to center this measurement on this block of wood. So we have all of our sections cut out and they are looking pretty good. I still need to sand the ends just a little bit, but when you go to pull on these handles, I wanna create a little space for the back so that your fingers can like, or Justin's fingers, can comfortably sit and pull. So I went ahead and I made a bunch of spacer pieces that are all a little bit smaller than each section. These are made from scrap plywood that we had in the back and it's basically just gonna go like this and like this. I'm going to attach these using some wood glue and a brad nailer. Okay, so the handles look great, and while these are drying, I wanna start thinking about color. In an ideal world, I would stain this whole thing and leave it wood, but with the way that the handles are, they unfortunately don't cover the pre-existing holes, and I even felt that doing like a dowel fill where you like fill it with a small piece of like wooden dowel you'll still see where the holes used to be so i've made the decision to paint this whole thing i know it hurts me too but justin did say he has some olive tones in his home and i think olive would be a very beautiful color so when i was at home depot this morning i picked up some olive swatches and i want to tape these onto the dresser so i can kind of do a side by side comparison and then we can go pick up some paint I like this one. Back to Home Depot. That's Depot in. It's just another way to say Depot. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, paint has been acquired. I just spent some time taking all the drawers out. And I think the last thing I'm gonna do today is sand this whole thing, take all the varnish off, and then have it prepped for painting tomorrow. Tomorrow I can just put on the handles, give it a paint, and then I think we're pretty much done. Ooh, I'm so excited to show Justin. Okay, so I'm just getting prepped to put the primer coat on and before I do any painting, I actually wanted to put the handles on the dresser. This way, if I wanna make any small adjustments with some sanding, I can do that now. And I'm just attaching the handles with a pilot hole and some two inch screws. I actually decided not to glue them on just in case Justin wants to take them off in the future. The primer coat is a really important step for this dresser because it not only improves the paint's adhesion and durability, it also helps to prevent the knots in the wood from showing through the surface of the paint over time. While the primer coat was drying, I decided I wanted to give the wings on Becky's lamp a second coat of the stain. The base of the lamp was just a little bit darker than the wings. I also just wanted the panels to be a bit of a deeper orange, so here is me just staining those again. Then I went back to the dresser and I went in with this lovely green. Oh my goodness, this is just such a beautiful green color. I am so excited to get this on the dresser. Good morning, today is the big day. I am just getting ready to show Becky and Justin their new items. I cannot wait to see their reactions. Before that, I have a couple things that I still need to do. Now that the second layer of stain are on these panels, it's time to reassemble Becky's lamps. But I do need to update you guys. I actually made a couple changes yesterday while I was waiting for coats of paint to dry. Here's the lamp, it'll help me explain a little bit better. So you know how originally I had made eight inch rings to go over this? It was just feeling a bit too oversized for the base. So I decided to remake the support rings and the small size I could make was six inches because I still needed the inside to be able to fit over the lamp harp here. But I do feel a little bit better just bringing it in two inches. Hopefully it will balance it out a bit more. Now we can finally assemble Becky's lampshade. This thing looks amazing if I do say so myself. And it's actually really secure and stable. But I'm still gonna add a little bit of wood glue on a paintbrush just on the underside of the notches here, just to hold them in place so in case anything happens, but we're almost there. So I picked up this LED Edison bulb and I think it's gonna look really pretty when you can see it kind of through the panels. And the final touch on this lamp is this little lampshade topper. Um, this is from a pre-existing lamp that I do not use anymore. And it's going to hold on our lampshade. And then that's it. Okay, and the moment we've all been waiting for, I'm gonna go set up both of our upcycles and then we can show Justin and Becky. Ooh, let's do that. Should we go get Justin? Are you ready? I'm so ready. Okay. Carefully, we'll bring you over here. <laughs> okay. I was gonna take your blindfold off for you, but I think you could do it. Okay. Am I good to just take it off? Yes. Okay, let's see how this goes. Belgique tied it on really great. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, I like how you did the handles, Thank too. 
Those those are the handles. That was right? the, those are brand new handles. Oh, and handcrafted. Oh my gosh! Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't have recognized it if anything. Um, I wanted to do something that like leaned a bit mid-century modern, but not like too mid-century modern, only because there wasn't too many like styles going on in your home right now. So I thought this was a good middle ground. This is a great choice. I would not have thought to like do the handles like this too. And like, it has a cool design that it could stand on its own. Well, yes, thank you. Awesome. Okay, no, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it actually looks amazing. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's go get Becky's Becky. lamp. Okay, I'm gonna go get Becky. Now I'll go get her. Okay, Becky, I'm gonna yes. put my hands on your shoulders. Uh -huh. If you can just keep your eyes closed yes, for me. absolutely. I'm gonna direct you to okay. the right spot. That's scary. <laughs> I trust you, but also I like don't. No. <laughs> All right, open your eyes. <laughs> oh my God. What the heck? <laughs> So professional. Thank you. Wow. I I literally didn't know what you were gonna do, and this is like not anything I could have imagined. I'm so glad you took this because like I wouldn't have come up with this. Oh, I'm glad and thank you for trusting me with it. You did seem kind of iffy about the base at first, but I was like, we're leaning into the base. I love it. Woods. Well, it just was so random before, it but was. now it's like it works so well. <laughs> I'm so glad you like it. It's this. so good. It looks so good. Success. Okay, guys, I think we were pretty successful with the projects. It's even more of a payoff that Becky and Justin also enjoyed their items. And I would totally love to do something like this again in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments down below. Maybe this is something you'd like to see Kelsey or Becky attempt. Maybe you would have done something completely different with these items. But anyway, let me know. I just want to say thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Make sure you check out the link in my description to book your dream car through Turo. If you enjoyed today's video, check out this one where Becky and Kelsey DIY whatever our friends want, including me. <laughs> so I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. Honestly, this is the easiest plant stand you can make. <laughs> Why does this look so hilarious? Like I'm, I'm petting my little tassel pets. All right, see you in a bit, guys. <laughs>